Hello and welcome to the tutorial for the Polyjam MIDI tools. I'll try to make this short. Um, so first of all, the MIDI plugins, they don't generate any sound. These are only arpeggios that are sending out MIDI messages. So before doing anything, you need to put after the device some synth sound. So I chose this sound and now if I press the play button here you will notice there's nothing happening so you have to start the Ableton sequencer I put in before here a little just a drum sample so that we can kinda hear what the effect is doing so if I initialize it with zero steps and size zero you will notice that there is, let me just click this off, you will notice that there are this four, five departments here in this polyarp. The first one is the rate, and this is the division of the bar, it has the length of the note, and it has some sort of swing. It takes every second note and delays it by a bit. You have here different types of divisions of the bar, but I wouldn't recommend using them until you're kind of familiar. These are less musical, less approachable to the ear for creating like nice rhythms, but they're experimental, so if you're kind of adventurous, it would be good to try out. Second, you have here the velocity. Now the cool thing about this part here is that you can actually select a range of the velocity and here you have a little meter that shows the velocity, the actual velocity. This is like the center point and this is the range. Let me turn this louder a bit. hope you can hear that. Now if you put the speed, the speed is like a different rate. It kind of makes some um, accent in the if this is the rate then this would make accents of three one two three four one two three four one two three four well, actually it's four but one two three one two three one two three one two three one one two one two one two one two one two if you make a bigger range it would be more extreme one two three one two three you can set the direction of the movement up and down. Note off would determine a threshold which uh, under it there would be a note off message. So you can say that like above only the notes that are above 96 on the velocity scale would play. Exponential the exponential button is something quite nice. It's kind of instead of a linear curve for the the movement of the velocity here, you can get something that's that's more human a little bit. If it's on zero, it would be completely linear. But if I turn on the exponential, the, you see it jumps off to the to the highest point and kind of like more in a different way okay so let me just now put this on four now let me for now turn off the range so you can hear better what's going on with this device on the pitch area turn this a bit slower now here you can control the MIDI note that's being banged out right now it is completely chromatic scale which means the, all the notes are here uh, later on I will show how to use the scalar device which is a separate device which is activated through this little button which will allow this to be something much more musical but for now let me show you this so this is, this is the root note that's being played steps just like in the normal Ableton's uh, arpeggiator. Now I have it on two steps. Each step is one semitone difference because this is a chromatic scale. 
Now each two steps, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. each one in a two semitones difference. Have here up to seven steps. Now each each step here is in a one tone difference. Now an uh, interesting feature that I put in here is this the bottom area. You can actually take this whole movement of seven steps going up and tell it to, to go one step or two steps down let's say like one octave down and two steps of one octave down let's see I turn this on I have to, to select the when does it start to go down to the second step and now I'll let's say so it's taking basically the movement, but it cuts it somewhere in the middle. Maybe it would be easier to demonstrate if I have not as many steps. Let me turn this off. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Now I add this thing and so we took this movement and played it now one octave down. Now after you have this whole thing set up kind of the way you like it, you can here change the range, the full range of the, um, of the notes being played. Right now it's, it's the full range when minimum is 0 and max is 127, but you can, if for example you like this pattern but you want to play it on on the lower part of the keyboard, you can just like this is also very useful if you have um, drum samples that are only on one part of the keyboard on one octave. You have to select the octave, and then all this configuration would work only in the range that is given here. Um. When this is activated, let's set up here the range a bit to give it some dynamic. Oops. Oops. To open the length a bit, give it a little bit of swing. Maybe instead of a uh, Try seven here. Okay, that's the idea. Now, an important feature in this tool here is the record button. This allows you to record pretty much any of the movements inside any of the parameters here. So let me just map this and show you how it works. I'm gonna map this as a button, sorry. This one, I'll map it to this. I have a small nano control hoot here, just to demonstrate. And I'll move this thing, and then map this one, mapping each one to a different thing. Now I'll show you also these ones. That's the point of them. And let's do a length here. And maybe this. Okay, maybe that's enough. Now let me turn this off. Now, okay. Now you can see. Now let me record something. I have to keep pressing. Now you notice 
that these two different parameters they both have completely different loop lengths now this record button it doesn't fit to any bar or any tempo settings set up by Ableton at all each parameter here is completely autonomic and like does not relate to any other else if you want to stop the loop you just click the parameter and move it a little bit you can do it from from your controller and it will stop and if you want to get back to the loop that you recorded of the parameter movement just have to give here a short click like this and this would bounce back to the last loop that you recorded if you want to record a different loop you just record a different loop Whoop, I'm now recording the velocity can be any size any length of loop you want this will give the whole pattern that you're giving a very dynamic very um, analog kind of lively feeling and that's the cool thing that now you can control actually stuff that are related to the sound of the synth that you're actually working on let's say here on the operator it's very easy to set up like the aftertouch for example to control the time let's say put it on a hundred percent and now I'll, I'll turn up the length here. That's cool. Now let me try and map this aftertouch to another button here. Okay. Now I have this. Now let me just... Now these are not working anymore because I just moved the parameters so the loop is muted. This loop would run also when Ableton is off. Now let me try and record this aftertouch movement. Click the record button. gonna add here on the aftertouch that it affects also the filter frequency turn it on and put it here on a hundred percent now this movement Just change the release here of the synth a bit. And now this is sound very can very much tell that this is affecting the sound. Okay, that's it for now. Um, next up, I'll show you how the scaler works. So keep your heads up. See you later.